okay? Parshas Achrei Mos. V'dabber Hashem Moshe, Achrei Mos Shnei Bnei Aron. Hashem spoke to Moshe after the passing of the two sons of Aron. V'kor vosam l'fnei Hashem Yemusu. Because they had come close to Hashem. They passed away. They died. Because something they had done. So there was discussion. Is the question, was it because they had given a ruling without consulting with Moshe Rabbeinu, which is referred to as Mor HaLoch Mithnei Rabon? They had ruled in the presence of the Rebbe, Moshe Rabbeinu, Although the ruling was correct, but since they should have consulted and they did not, that's why they deserve to die? Or is it because, because the Torah juxtaposes right after they they were struck down by God, the Torah presents the portion of Shtu Yayin, that a Kohen who drinks wine and he officiates drinking means even as much as little as a reverse. Small amount, but it's considered the amount which is considered you've drunk, or he's not drunk and he's not intoxicated, he's not qualified to officiate. Now, let's understand what's the concept of Mora Loch of Rabban. Why, for that reason, did they, did they deserve to die? It's very interesting. We had the beginning of Pashas Vayikra, the Torah tell, tells us, Vayikra Shem El Moshe El Aaron. And Rashi goes to point out from Chazal that the 13 locations in the Torah, which it says Hashem spoke to Moshe and Aaron, and the 13 other locations, which indicates that Hashem spoke only to Moshe, not to Aaron. And what it means, he spoke to Moshe to communicate it specifically to Aaron. But there was never a time Hashem spoke directly to Aaron. 13 times. So we had mentioned many times that number 13 always connotes Echod. Now, what is the basis for Torah? The basis for Torah is Moshe Rabbeinu. Mo Torah tzim lono Moshe, Moshe Akilas Yaakov. The source of Torah is Moshe Rabbeinu. There's no other source of Torah. The Rabbam writes in his commentary on the Mishnah in Chulin that why do we circumcise ourselves? Originally, the mitzvah of Milo was given to Avram Avinu. But the reason why we circumcise ourselves is because at Sinai, Hashem said to Moshe, the Jews have an obligation to circumcise themselves on the eighth day. As it says in Hazria, that a woman who gives birth conceives a male, he must be circumcised on the eighth day. That's the reason why. Get out, Noshe. Although the reason is because of what happened between Yaakov Avinu and the Maloch, and he was injured. This has to do with the sciatica nerve. But the reason why is because that Sina was given that Losochu Bnei Yisrael Gira Noshe. Jews are not permitted to eat. Bnei Yisrael are not permitted to eat Gira Noshe. Everything emanates from, from Sinai. What does everything emanate from Sinai? Firstly, pre-Sinai, we were not a Jewish people. The Torah was given to Klal Yisrael. We became Klal Yisrael. We became the chosen people through receiving the Torah at Sinai. They have everything begins at Sinai. Our dimension of spirituality began at Sinai. Our classification of Atem Kriim Odom. Your classification is Odom, Hemel Kriim Odom. And the non Jews not classified as Odom. All this began at Sinai. And this was all communicated through Moshe. And how do we know that Moshe was God's spokesman? The famous Rambam in Hilchus Zorah Torah, because Hashem had spoken openly. The motion in the presence of every Jew. Every Jew at Sinai prophesies in the wake state. And as the Rambam says, Amen and Ro, we saw with our own eyes, we heard with our own ears. It wasn't hearsay. It was not communicated to us through a third party. Every Jew openly saw that motion was hand-picked and chosen to be Hashem's spokesman. So what is the source of, of, the, of the, the Torah is the word of Hashem? Moshe Rabbeinu. Any extrapolation or any ruling which is not sourced to Moshe Rabbeinu is not Torah. What Nodav and Avdiu had done, they were saying, <coughs> although Moshe is here, Moshe is the source of everything, of all Torahs, the word of Hashem, we have the ability 
to establish that same truth. So although they were correct, what they had done was not halachically incorrect in terms of the halacha, but because the way that halacha came about, it was not sourced and originate from Moshe Rabbeinu, it's not Torah. And a result of not being Torah, it's rejected in a way where it's not acceptable. To the point, the person is taken out. Right now, we're in the time of Sphira. This 30-day, three-day period, it's a semi borning period. Because the Gemara tells us that Rabbi Akiva was the greatest Torah sage of, of his time, <coughs> he was classified as Oko Hori Mitochen Zubazu, Rabbi Akiva. <coughs> he had the ability to uproot mountains and to grind them together. That was his level of depth and breadth of understanding, Rabbi Akiva. He had 24,000 Talmudim. That was the basis for Torah in the world. The world was illuminated through his students. And within a 30 day, day period, all 24,000 died. They perished. And the Gemara says, why did they die? Because they did not give sufficient respect to one another. That's why they passed away 33 days, all 24,000 students between Pesach and Shuas, 30 to 3 day period. Therefore, it's a semi-morning period. We explained what does it mean, no Gukov Zebu said. They did not treat one another respectfully. It doesn't mean literally what it means, because the obvious the obviousness is if actually if that was their failing, Rebbe Kiva being their Rebbe and observing this, how did he not rein in on them? <clears throat> he should have reprimanded them. Why didn't he? It doesn't mean that means that there were nuances of failing of respect which they did not provide and because of that, that's why they died. Meaning, if you have one person who's a certain dimension of Talmud Chochem, other person's great, but he's not quite at that level and you treat that person identically as the other, you're falling short of not offering appropriate respect to that Talmud Chochem. And since every Talmud Chochem in its own right is great, but the level of greatness is slightly different, each person has to be treated based on who he is. And that, they were not sensitive to that. And because they were not sensitive, that's the reason why they died within twenty four within this 33-day period. So it's a beautiful word from Rav Aaron Kotler, Zech Tzarek And he explains that the Talmudim of Rebbe Kivu meant to be the Bali Misora. What does Bali Sura mean? That the, this, this group of people were responsible to transmit the tradition from Sinai accurately it was given at Sinai. And it should be fully fleshed out as it was given at Sinai with all the principles. Now, but that's only correct if when you speak and you say something, I give it my fullest attention. But what about because I didn't give you sufficient respect, I don't value or revere esteem your word sufficiently. If that's the case, there may be nuances of lack of understanding which automatically comp compromises the Misora. This is Rabbi Aaron Kotler, Zed Tzadkul Vrocha. So because there were no low, no good covered by Zed, they did not treat one another and value one another's word as they should have with revered at that special level. Because of that, they weren't qualified to be the Baal Misora. So if they're not qualified, although they're great, they can, they cannot exist. It has to be stated clearly, these people are not qualified to carry the Misora, to tra transmit the, tra the tradition. The Hashem took them out in 33 days. That's how Rabbi Aaron explains it. Because Torah is only what was given to Moshe at Sinai. It has to have that precise, accurate transmission. And if it's failing in it, it's not Torah. It may be a new, it must have a semblance of Torah, maybe great intellectual intellectualism. There's nothing compared to it, but it's not Torah's Moshe. Because only Torah's Moshe is the Dvar Hashem. Because Moshe was the spokesman. So if Aaron's children, they had offered a ruling 
where they could have consulted with Moshe to confirm what they were saying, because it has to be sourced, has to be rooted in Moshe Rabbeinu, and since he did not, automatically, this is not, this is going contrary to what the basis for Torah is. Therefore, Hashem took them out immediately. And that was the Kiddush Hashem. Mikrovi HaKodesh. That was their only sin. To indicate that why did they die only because of this. We had said at the beginning of Ayikro, Ayikro Moshe, so you would think that maybe the sound, the level of audibility that Hashem had communicated to Moshe was the reason why nobody heard it outside the old Moed is because it was in a whisper. So Rashi cites Chazal that the Kol Hashem is Shoghar Rosen, he quotes the, the Karak and Tilim. It was the exact same level of audibility at Sinai. Except, miraculously, it stopped at the confines of the Mishkan. It did not go out of the old Moed. So nobody could hear out, the, although the level of audibility was the same when he had spoken to Moshe of him. So we asked the question, if he's speaking to Moshe, what do you have to speak at that level of audibility? He's speaking to millions of people, 600,000 men above the age of 20. Besides the women and the children at Sinai, to state it in a level that every person should hear it, it has to be that level of audibility. But if you're only speaking to Moshe Rabbeinu, what does that be at that level of, level, level of audibility? So we explain, and the Ramban explains that the Mishnagon we find is the equivalent of Sinai. Whatever you find at Sinai was in the Mishkan. The gold is fire. The Kroshim, the vertical beams which encircled the Mishkan, this is Kalal Yishon circling the mountain. We find literally a replication, the Mishkan is a replication of Sinai. So at Sinai, Hashem spoke at that level of audibility, he speaks to Moshe, that same level of audibility. First of all, who's Moshe? Moshe is Shokal connected to Israel. The Torah was given to Klal Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama, his dimension of spirituality was the equivalent of the entire Klal Yisrael. That's who Moshe was. So when Hashem had communicated the Torah to Moshe Rabbeinu, who was Moshe? That conduit to Klal Yisrael is the equivalent of themselves. Therefore, he was the only one qualified to receive the Torah because Torah was given to Klal Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu being that person, dimensionally speaking, spiritually speaking, he was the only one qualified. But just as the Torah was given to Klaus, it was at that level of audibility at Sinai, identically, what was communicated to Moshe, maybe it was that same level of audibility. That's why Yikrael Moshe, Kol Hashem Shove Arozim, Kol Hashem Bamoyim, it was exactly the same. And therefore, that was the ultimate Kiddush Hashem. To establish Torah, to say, this is it, nothing else is that, although other things may mimic it, it may be a semblance of it. It's not what it's about. So that's why when they heard Mora Lochem Fnei Rabon, the reason why they were taken out, not because it was just, it was a disrespect, because they were making a statement. And the statement is totally unacceptable because the only source of Torah being the Dvar Hashem, it has to be called Moshe Rabbeinu. And if it's not Moshe Rabbeinu, it doesn't begin. Therefore, the Gemara tells us no, no, is not Roy Lachadish Dove Miatsmo. If a prophet comes and he presents Alocha, which was not presented by Moshe Rabbeinu at Sinai, he's a Navi Sheker. He's not permitted. Why? Because the Navi only communicates what Hashem is saying, and all communications regarding what Torah is, those communications were only given to Moshe Rabbeinu. A Navi who comes and says, Hashem says something else should be done, that you should conduct yourself this way, even though it's a nuance to Alocha, but it was not given at Sinai, he's a, he's a false prophet. And he's put to death for that reason. Because again, he's altering what Torah is, because that's not what Torah, Torah is only, if it sourced and emanates from Moshe Rabbeinu. That was, that was the failing of Mor Alocha with the Rabbam. The Rabbam rules in Hilda's Talmud Torah that in the time of the Gemara, there was a thing called a Metur The The Rebbe had presented his material, his Torah material, and it was a, an intermediary between the Rebbe and the Talmudim, the students. And he would give over what the Rebbe had said verbatim, verbatim, what the Rebbe had said, and he would give it over to, to the students. And when the students 
would hear it and they would ask a question. The question was asked to this maturgam, this interpreter, this interim person, and that person would give over the question verbatim to the Rebbe. And that was the method of transmitting Torah from the Rebbe to the students was through this intermediary. That's the maturgam. And even the level of audibility, the voice. So when the Rebbe speaks, the Talmud to hear the Rebbe. They hear the Rebbe. However, it has to go through this interim person, which gives it over. And the Rebbe does not speak louder than the intermediary, and the intermediary doesn't speak louder than the Rebbe, the audibility of the voice. So the question is why? I mean, if actually, if the Talmudim hear the Rebbe, and the Rebbe hears the question Talmudim, why does it have to go through this interim person who's known as the Maturgamon? So we'd explained at Sinai, all the, at Sinai, what was the method of transmission? Klauser heard, as the Rambam says, Moshe, leich emolem kach makach. Moshe, go tell the Jewish people such and such. So the Jews heard what Hashem had said. However, Moshe Rabbeinu repeated what Hashem had said, and the level of audibility of Marsas and Brochus was exactly the level of audibility of Moshe's voice. Moshe's voice and Hashem's voice was, was the same level of audibility when it was transmitted to Klauser. So what is the method of transmission? You source it, it's the source, the interim person, and the recipient. The reason why by Kriya Satar, why do we have three people standing at the at the Bima when we read the Torah? Because one represents Hashem, one represents Klal Yisrael, and the other represents Moshe Rabbeinu. That's the reason why you always have three people at the Bima. Because the reading of the Torah is the equivalent of what? That is, represents the method through which Torah is transmitted. One, one Hashem is the source, the other person is the is the interim person, and the other person represents the recipient, which is Klal Yisrael. And that's the reason why the Ramo says this, this, it's not a chiyuv, but it's a minuk to stand during Krisa Torah. Why is it a minuk to stand during Krisa Torah? Because just as at, at Sinai, when we received the Torah, it was bereses of bezeir, it was trepidation. We totally consumed with with reverence and with the presence of Hashem. And they stood, as it says, Vayamdu by Yiru. They stood and they saw. The Kriya Torah is a replication of that, as the three represent Kabbalah Satora. Therefore, there's a minog that people stand during Kriya Torah for that re- for the same reason. It's a replication of what? Of the giving of Torah at Sinai, the reading of Torah, when we read from the Torah itself. No, you find that there's arguments in the Gemara. Be Shammai, Be Hillel, Hillel and Shammai, Reb Yudah, Reb Shimon, they're arguing. No, nobody, right, nobody passed away, right. Right, I mean, why is that more of a question than anything else, right? Okay, okay. Right, now, the Gemara tells us in, in, in Ervin that the argument, Be Shammai, Be Hillel, it's Elavil, Dibri, Kim Chaim. Both words, both positions are correct. Yeah, Beishamai says that Tzoras Erva permitted that the co-wife of a, a woman, of the person de- who deceased, the survivor of can marry, Beishamai says you're not permitted. That the co-wife is the equivalent of the woman and she's not permitted and if you marry that woman, the child's illegitimate. So Beishamai says it's not a mamzer, Beishil says it is a mamzer. How could it be Elohim different Kim Chaim? I mean, how could both be correct? It, once it's permitted, once it's not permitted. Once it's legitimate, once it's illegitimate. But the Mar says, no. Both of them are the words of God. How could they both be the words of Hashem? So there's a ritva in Ervin over there. Explains it this way. You know, we have a Masora from Sinai. We have Yid Gimel Nidus Shatorin There's a methodology how to Interpret the Torah, which is with Torah Shemal Peh. Although Hashem said clearly what, what, what he said in the written law, what he meant, but there is an obligation to associate the oral law with the written law to explain how exactly is extrapolated from the written law. Why is this is what, what Hashem said and he didn't say something else? So Hashem gave us methodologies how to extrapolate it and how to extract it from the written law. As a result of what of 
people forgetting. There was a machlokas at a certain point in history. So people didn't, the Mesora was questioned. It was questioned what it was. Shammai had one Mesora, Hill had another Mesora in terms of interpretation, certain nuances of difference. But each of them represented the Mesora. That was the basis for Machlokas. So whenever we find, this is what Hashem says, let's say you have an irresolvable question and everybody works within the system. The Torah says, if it's irresolvable, you go after majority rule. But maybe the majority is not right. Maybe they're not right. Torah says, but if it's irresolvable and humanly and with taking everything into consideration, you're able to resolve it, this, 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 is, this is the way you deal with it. You go after majority rule. But again, so Hashem says like this, God knows what absolute truth is. That's on the heavenly level. But on the human level, Hashem says, you work within the system which I gave you. Whatever you come out with at the end of the day, it's correct because it all confirm, conforms with the system. As a result of that, each of them is the word of Hashem. You both, the question is, who's more right? Who's more right? But what about if there's a fallacy in logic? Once there's a fallacy in logic, it's not elevated different to Chaim. Whenever you find any argument in Shas, it's not an argument in logic. It's how to extrapolate and extract from the written law, the oral law. And the morale of Prague says that after the time of the Rishonim, the concept of Elva Divir Klim Chaim no longer exists. Whenever there's an argument, it's if the other person would understand what the other person is saying, only one is right. They're both not right. And there's some level of fallacy in logic, or there's some source that was not understood correctly. That's why there's an argument. But in time of Rishonim, you have the Rambam and the Rajba, these Rishonim, their level of understanding was Elva Divir Klim Chaim. Their argument was only based on their Mesora, whatever it is, exactly what exactly should the halacha be. But there was no incorrection. There wasn't any shortcoming of clarity of their position and what they understood. No, I understand that. It's okay to, to disagree or whatever, but you, you're saying that they valued each other equally, that there was no... Definitely. And just like the students of Rabbi Kiva, there was no correct, correct, ego, correct. there was no nothing... Correct. Firstly, let's make it clear. If you're a Talmud, there's difference if, if we have two people who are, who are colleagues, peers, we could argue. And they revered each other identically. I don't want this on the, on the recording. One second. Achrei Moshnei B'nei Aaron B'karvosom B'nei Hashem Yamusu. So here Rashi cites the the, the Chazal, Matam Adomar Hoy Reb Lezer Ben Azariah Moshe Lemoshe. He explained it with an allegory. L'cholay shenichnas itzel rofe. The person wasn't well. He comes to a doctor. Amado atochal tzonam. Well, tishkav bitchav. Don't eat cold food. Don't sleep in a damp location. And then a second person with a similar illness comes, and the doctor also instructs him, don't eat cold food, don't sleep in a damp location. Because, so you shouldn't die as so-and-so died. This other person had your condition, and because he ate cold food and he slept in a damp location, if you don't want to die as he died, be careful. The first person who was instructed by the doctor, the person didn't appreciate that medical advice because nobody had actually died as a result of not bathing that way with this with this particular condition. Therefore, our one's being instructed that regardless of who you are, because his sons, they crossed the line which they shouldn't have crossed, and that's why they passed away. Therefore, 
although you may have this understand that you may be qualified, you're not qualified unless you're told that you are. There's certain areas you have no right to go there unless it's specifically, halachically confirmed it's permitted. Otherwise, you're not because your children went, although they were right, because again, the approach was incorrect and therefore they died. As much as you believe you're right, that doesn't make it right. Therefore, you can't enter into the Kodesh whenever you choose to go there. Yom Hashem al Moshe Daber al Aaron. Achicho. Speak to Aaron, your brother. First of all, why does he mention Achicho? We know Aaron's the brother of Moshe. Speak to Aaron, Achicho. Bal Yavam Cholesa la Kodesh, be based la Parochas. He should not come whenever he chooses at any time into the holies on the other side of the curtain. What is the other side of the curtain? El Pnea Kapores, Al Sher Al Oron, to be in the presence of the covering of the Oron. The Kapores was the covering that had the cherubs on it. Lo Yomus. And only then he will not die. So the inference is, but if he does go there, when at times that he's not permitted, that means he will die. Because that location, when I appear, I appear with the cloud at that location. On the Kaporis. Because if the inference is, but if he does go there, he will die. Was my presence is there? He should not be accustomed to coming there. It's interesting. What do you mean, lo yargul level? You're not permitted with lo yargul. Zel pshuto. That's the simple understanding. So it seems to be, of course, there'll be a certain familiarity which he will establish, and that seems to be would cause a certain level of disrespect. That's the connotation. Lo yargul level. He should not be accustomed to come. Now, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he asked the question to Hashem, when things got worse rather than better, when Paro had withdrawn the straw subsidy, he said, Look, why you make it so difficult for the people? Why did you send me as your agent? So what Hashem said, Atatiria, now you will see the redemption, but you will not bring the Jews into, into Canaan. And Asher with the disciples Chazal believe Veiro, Vai al Davdim with those Mishtakin. Woe to those who are lost and then no longer found. Avram Yitzchak Yaakov made promises, and I never revealed to them, gave them understanding of who I am, which you do have that understanding. They never asked the question; you asked the question. Therefore, because so, why did Moshe Rabbeinu ask the question? Because he felt because Hashem allowed him into the inner sanctums of understanding of who he was which the other Sakadoshim did not have that understanding, that level of relationship caused him to feel he had the right to ask the question, but he didn't have the right to ask the question. Moshe. So that regibus, or that familiarity, that Hashem had shown him, that special intimacy in relationship, that was the cause why he failed. So it seems to be the same thing. When you come into the Kochi Kadoshim, the Holy of Holies, the location of the Shekinah, we can't even relate to the level of reverence you have to have. If you come too often and it becomes regular, it becomes ordinary, literally ordinary, you will no longer have that sense. And once, if you don't have that sense, you cannot survive. Of course, you always have to have that sense. The Gemara tells us in Yuma, there's a question, how many Kwan we don't were they during Bais Rishon and how many were they during Bais Shani? During Bais Shani, there were over 300 Kohanim Gedolim. You hear this? 300 high priests. By Shady was 420 years. And during his 420 year period, there were over 300 high priests. During the first one, there's a question whether they were 12 or 16 during a 410 year period. And among them, Shimon Atzadik was 40 years during the second values. 
So Gemara says, why? Because every Yom Kippur, when they were going to the Holy of Holies, they would expire there. <laughs> because they were not really at the level that they were qualified to be there. Because there was any degree of level of lapse of focus, reverence, that was a basis to die. So every year they'd be pulling the coin gold out of the Holy of Holies. He went in with a rope around his waist and they would pull him out because he would expire because of the intensity of Kedusha. Because they didn't, they weren't, they didn't have the capacity to appreciate, to have that reverence that was necessary. Therefore, they died. Why did none of you deserve to die originally? Because at Sinai, they with the Shimon Zakanim, they all died. Why did they die? So it says, it says, Vayochle, Vayishtu, at the end of Mishpatim. Because they, when the Shechina came to Sinai, they gazed directly at the Shechina, which, which was considered arrogance. We find Moshe Rabbeinu by the burning bush, what does it say? When he, all of a sudden, he hears the verse, voice of the Malach, Shalno Lecho Me'arag Lecho, the Avnas Kodeshu, it says, Vayaste Moshe Ponov, he turned away his face away. When he heard it was the Shechina, divine presence, he turned away. That was due to his humility. It's inappropriate for me to look at, at the Shechina. They gazed directly at the Shechina. That level of lack of humility, they deserve to die for that reason. So why did they die? So Rashi says, because Hashem didn't want to in any way compromise the, the joy of Kabbal Satorah, that Jews, Jews should go into a state of grieving. That would undermine the quality of the Kabbal Satorah. So he left it for later, on the eighth day, when the Mishkan was going to take on a permanence, that's when they were they were punished then, except it had to manifest in itself that they have to have some level of failing. But the reason why they did was because of what happened at Kabbalah Satorah. Because they didn't have sufficient reverence in the presence of the Shina. So over here, Rashi is citing because if you come too often, you're not going to have the appreciation for what the Divine Presence is, and as a result of that, you des the person desire deserves to be compromised. Okay.